Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to a special Conan Exiles video. Today, taking a look at the brand new DLC that's about to drop on PC, or is already live, and will be coming to the Xbox and the PlayStation 4 very soon. This DLC is based on Conan the Barbarian movie, the original movie that they made in the 80s with Arnold Schwarzenegger. But we've got much more than that. The Conan devs did do a stream today, and they spoke about some little bits of information that I think is pretty cool. New build pieces as well as new tameable pets that are going to be coming to the game very soon. But I do want to review some of this DLC and basically ask the question, is it worth it? This DLC is paid for, you're going to have to buy it and it doesn't come in your season pass. It seems a bit of a strange move. I wasn't really that happy or thrilled when I heard about it. The DLC is a little bit cheaper than the average DLC, it's like $7, £7. Pounds. But still, it does seem a little bit odd that celebrating the one year anniversary of Conan Exiles, they're making us buy DLC. Well, I say making, obviously it's always a choice. And hopefully I'm going to give you the heads up whether or not it's going to be worth it. So don't forget to like, let's crack on and let me show you everything that's in this new DLC. Okay, so first of all, we've got all these statues, and that is pretty much the big bulk part of this statue. It is indeed around $7, £6.50, something like that. It's on Steam, it will be coming to Xbox, PS4. Probably not today, maybe not tomorrow, I'm guessing at some point next week. That's what the devs kind of suggested in their stream. There are some more placeables, but this is what you get. Conan the Exiles obviously is based heavily on the Conan books but it does take even more inspiration from some of the films in the past as well. So they've got the statue of Conan here, which is like the one of the legendary poses. You get all of these statues in different, you've got them in sort of gold, and you've got them in bronze, I do believe, and then you've got it in sort of ivory or marble. They're pretty cool. I have to say the art on them does look fantastic. Having these dotted around your base, you know, as some sort of a decorative piece must be really cool. If you go along looking at these ones as well, I really like this sword. I presume that sword is in the game. In fact, I'm hoping that the sword, of course, is in the game. It should be. But yet, yeah, this is obviously just another pose, one of the more famous ones. This scene where he's training with his fights is something I've actually done as cosplay to celebrate 15,000 subscribers way back when, when Conan Exiles first came out. But again, it's pretty cool. I really like the artwork on these ones. And then we've got the outstretched pose. This is more of a classic one that was used on the posters for the movie. And again, the detail is really cool. It's definitely some of the better statues there. I mean, statues are always pretty good anyway. Now, in the actual film, he's got some companions that help him out. Sabuti or Sabutai. He's like some legendary uh, bowman. And they're pretty cool as well. And then we've got these final ones, which is like the girlfriend of Conan in the movies. Valeria, she's like a, more than that, she is like a warrior. Spoilers, she dies in a movie, just saying, just saying people, she dies. So they're pretty cool, they, these ones seem a little bit taller, I don't know if they are taller than Conan, maybe she's taller than him in real life, I'm not sure. Maybe not, maybe it's just the, the way that I'm looking at these angles. So there we go, brand new set of statues, but what else is there? Well, you can have figurines. So yeah, this is exactly the same thing, it's just the statues, but they've been miniaturised to make nice little tiny little figurines. I'm showing more off in their gold and their colours. You've got the bronze ones here. And then you've got the ivory. A mixture of Valeria as well again. So if you want to decorate your home, your bases, your buildings. You can go ahead and do so. So yeah, pretty much decorative stuff. And this is kind of leading me on to the discussion. Is it really worth it? Is it worth $7 to buy some statues? I'm not too sure. As good as these are, I really don't think even that is quite a low price, I guess, for some cosmetic items. But it just feels like a bit of a missed opportunity to reward the players that have been sticking through Conan and new players that maybe have just jumped on. We'll get into that in a bit more detail. I did have a little chat with the community manager of Conan Exiles yesterday on Twitter. But here we go. We've got the Setit Cult statue. It's pretty cool. This one's just a, another version of it. And then we've got these various statues. I think the movie finishes with him sitting on the throne like this. And it kind of fades away. That one is the Atlantean throne. We've got this, which is the Lion Throne. I have to say, Lion Throne's pretty cool. I'm not too sure about what, how the actual exiles or how your character is going to sit on the throne. It does look a little bit derpy to me. But there you go. That's just another way. 
Now normally the DLC for Conan Exiles always comes with like building pieces and this one doesn't. Much like the Pit set which was more skins, weapons and stuff for your animals, this one has no actual building pieces other than these statues. It does have some masks, obviously I'm wearing that one here. I'm just strolling through them a little bit to show you what it looks like. You can see these are all based from the movie. It's got a nice shape to it, I have to say, it's quite large, it's quite big. And this is where they're pretending to be a guard and they're going through the uh, the palace trying to infiltrate the palace and stuff. This one's a bit fierce, sort of barbarian hall style one. I do believe one of the bad guy's sons wears that one, maybe. And this one is an actual Conan hat, this is the one that he wears. Now in terms of what they actually give you, what they do, the Steps helmet here has got an armor value of 13. Obviously that's going to scale up when you craft the better versions and it does give you some sort of heat bonus and bonus agility. It is a light armor. The Ravager helmet has going to have cold. It's got bonus of strength and it is a medium piece. It's going to give you 31 armor for the exceptional. The King's Guard helmet has got encumbrance Again, it's got a little bit more of extra heat, and it is a medium. The Reaver helmet here has got, um, is a heavy piece, and it's going to give you extra grit, and again, cold. And then lastly, the Set It Cult one is a heavy piece, and it's going to give you bonus accuracy. I'm getting naked just to show you the war paints. There's three war paints being added as well, all based on when they're about to pretty much go into the... Uh, enemy's castle they're trying to infiltrate you at night or do something along them lines i have to say i don't think i've ever used a war paint maybe i should yeah but these war paints are called the necker war paints so if you look them up in the admin panel or whatever you should be able to craft most of this stuff just by going through your feats and you'll see it once you purchase the dlc it's like conan's statue and if we equip the other two as well get an idea what it looks like more stripes going all the way across and then the necker the final one you can see it's going around a little bit more so there we go that is everything that's in the dlc that that is the dlc guys so i went looking around to get make sure i had all the pieces to show you i think there is one piece actually i haven't shown you which is one of the thrones that he sits on but someone pointed out on the forums that in the imperial east dlc you had 39 new kitan building pieces 15 new armor pieces in three sets nine new weapons five new war paints and 25 new placeables that cost eight euros, and the Riddle of Steel has 25 new placeables, three new war paints, and five new helmets, seven euros. Is that good value? I don't think it is. Yesterday, the Conan Exiles Twitter page said this, happy one year anniversary, Exiles. We've had a great journey since leaving early access a year ago. Celebrate the one year anniversary. We're launching the anniversary update, and we're kicking off a free weekend starting right now. So that is on PC only. So I replied, not giving the one year DLC for free, though. And the, the community manager chimed in. We can't really give everything for free, can we? All updates and new content is free. The DLCs are literally the only one thing we charge for and they are still optional. I have got a little bit of a bone to pick with this answer because for me, a lot of that content was promised during the access, i.e. the witchcraft is pretty much the closest thing we're gonna get to the uh, sort of necromancer class that we was meant to be getting. And I did just remind them that any online game with servers should be offering ongoing content. This DLC is not part of the season pass, don't get me wrong, I think the DLC is fairly priced, but the assumption we should be super grateful, nah. The community manager said, who said you should be super grateful? Not sure where that is coming from. Almost most games with servers either release pay content or have a subscription. And again, I'll point it out because I know my games, guys. Rust Arc will have given massive free mods or monthly content free out of early access and not just content they didn't fit in. I know the updates kind of provides a mix of fresh and old, but still, DLC is fine, just thought it could have been a nice touch. And they did reply back saying that they agree it would be nice to be now to give away this DLC for free. So I tried making a joke of it saying if this tweet gets 1 million likes we'll give all the DLC free etc. So various people got involved and we had a little bit of a talk and it ended pretty amicably. I've not got sour grapes guys, I think Conan Exiles has done a great job and it's done fantastic for my channel. But that doesn't mean I'm some sort of bum licker. If I think something needs to be said I'm always going to say it. Just like I spoke about the fact that they have kind of let G portal overcharge people for servers i'll also bring up the fact that i just don't think this dlc is that great value 
When you take a look at all the other DLC with all the different weapons, all the new build pieces, literally for $1 more, we got all that. I tell a lie, actually you can see here, it's a little bit cheaper than that in the UK, but I'm pretty sure in America it's only like one euro or one dollar difference. Bearing in mind as well that they have released four sets of these over the year, and Conan Exiles isn't exactly not making any money. If you really want to celebrate a year worth of support from players that have loved your game, bought your game and promoted it heavily, whether it's on forums, recommended it to friends, I think it would have been really cool to get the DLC for free. I don't think this DLC warrants £6.50, especially when so much of it is just decorative. It is additional, you don't have to buy this DLC. And in the past I have had problems with the fact that weapons and armour is included as this DLC. Regardless of how similar it is to other weapons, there are still some DLC armour sets or weapons that are better than the legendary game gear that you get. I also find it a bit weird that they've made a big hoo-ha of their season pass, which they never had for last year. Or well, don't remember seeing it anyway advertised. And all of a sudden we've got a season pass for year two, which doesn't include this DLC. I'll be honest, it just seems like they wanted to make a buck. They knew it would be generating a lot of hype with this update. And why not? Of course, games companies can make money. That is not something I'm against. But I just think sometimes with the way that so much content was cut from early access and we still haven't seen it put into the game, maybe they really should have been working on the content rather than this stuff. Not to mention that this DLC, The Riddle of Steel, only comes literally a month after the last one came out. Counter at that point, of course, we have got the update. It does add the underwater dungeon, which I don't think was promised during early access. It's more some of the other stuff like the witch fire. I try and be balanced. I'm going to be critical and hopefully I'm going to praise them at the same time. But I just don't think this was very good value for money, this DLC. I feel like it would have been nice. Funcom, the makers of Conan Exiles, are doing really well. They've made an absolute killing in the last two years, all because of Conan Exiles. It saved them from bankruptcy. Now that's what the developers have said, it's, that's openly what they've said multiple times in live streams, that without the success of Conan Exiles, they really might not be where they are today. They've got big plans for the future, including a single player Conan Exiles game, more DLC to come, and of course they are still working on free content, and that's right, it is coming. Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden was pretty popular for them too, and although Secret World Legends maybe hasn't caught on as much as they'd like, they're still pushing ahead with other avenues as well, including the RTS game Conan Unconquered. This was their revenue in 2018, absolutely through the roof, their best they've ever had, beat in 2017, which was also one of the best years they've ever had. And they're now in a position where they're debt free, they don't owe anyone else any outstanding debts. And a hell of a lot of that money has come through the DLC that they've been shipping pretty much every big massive update. They're working on more stuff to do with a multiplayer co-op shooter game and they're working on the Dune IP which is pretty much I think going to be a big huge survival game. It could possibly be more maybe MMO, I'm not sure, but I think the game itself suits more for a survival genre rather than just a typical MMO, but I could be wrong. But you can see their Conan single player is in their plans going forward. So the point I'm trying to make is Conan Exiles has made Funcom absolute shitloads of money. Any online service game that wants them players to carry on playing the game and really just stay a part of the world does need incentives. We do need fresh content coming through all the time. And Conan Exiles, although they've been updating the game regularly, it hasn't been as regular as some would like you to believe. And especially as a lot of the content that has come has went to have been here during the early access period and they simply cut it because they just didn't have time. We get told that they're working on this and don't expect this, stuff like mounts might not come. We're also missing some of the real siege stuff that was meant to come to the game, as well as some of the fraud management that was also meant to come to the game. A year after its full release, I can see why some players really have maybe stopped playing it straight away, even though they've only just started last month. Conan Exiles is a great game, but it quickly runs out of steam once you've hit level 60 and you've completed most of the dungeons. You guys let me know, have you bought any of the DLCs? What do you feel about them? Is it okay to have weapons and armour in DLC that's supposedly meant to be cosmetic only? Is there enough content in Conan? Are you happy with the dungeons that are coming? I'm going to finish off with just a few things they mentioned during the live stream that could get a little bit exciting. 
basically the developer said that there were going to be some new build pieces added now this might not necessarily just be part of dlc there may be some new features added new pieces that you're going to need he didn't elaborate what it was but he did say that we are going to have tameable gorillas soon you will be able to have gorillas as a pet they're working on it internally right now they're also working on their next dungeon which is going to be a climbing puzzle dungeon it's going to be a little bit more different lots of places on the map where you've gone into some of the caves it does seem like there's doorways that go to other places well according to the developer they're not always going to be focused on combat some of them will have some things like this or they'll be much smaller in scale so expect to see that open up in the future they have said that crossbows won't be coming to the game some people really want crossbows well it's just not going to happen he also said don't be too believing of some of the stuff you've seen from content creators if you take a look through the admin panel i know a lot of you guys were really hopeful of stuff being implemented into the game like bronze coins and they basically just said that youtubers like firespark and just tall so great they show stuff off really well but some of the conclusions they've drawn because they've seen stuff in like the spawnable section isn't necessarily going to come to the main game his explanation was that stuff like that like the bronze coins and other features they're actually for the developers just to have some fun a lot of developers play obviously Conan Exiles at home and they work on stuff at home and they kind of add it in for just like a role play experience for themselves what they'll do they'll work in at home and then they'll just copy and paste it into the main game at work if they've got a good idea so that others can try it out it doesn't mean all of the content's going to be coming which again is really weird. I think if uh, some of the developers think it's pretty fun, it's pretty cool, why not have it in the full game? So there we go. That's everything to do with the DLC, what I think about DLC, and what to expect maybe with a few things coming in the future. If you've liked this video, let me know. If you agree, if you disagree, if you think I'm just a whinge bag, also let me know. I just like seeing fairness, and I like seeing players really rewarded. Well, that's it. I'm done. If you want to come and join my exile server i've got running at the moment come and join my discord all the links will be down below come in and ask how to and we'll give you a certain role where you will get the password and you'll basically get the information it is popping off at the moment we've had over 200 people join the discord asking about it so expect the server to be quite full and expect me to be raiding quite a lot until next time ratbags i'll see you later